Welcome back everybody. Um, so we're gonna do something a little different uh, starting off now in the winter season since there's not gonna be as much track racing, track coverage and contents to kind of keep things going. Well, you know, we uh, everybody knows we finally got monetized and all that jazz. So uh, Garrett's done a lot of good work on that. And I appreciate his hard work. So I'm gonna try to help him out and pump up some stuff in the meantime in between him putting the other videos out and try to help keep us growing and uh, keep our family growing and keep y'all entertained. Um, so what we're gonna do is start to try to keep up with all of our winter projects and stuff like that between my Cobra, um, Garrett's car, Heath's vet, or possibly a new project, we don't know yet. Um, Greg's Cadillac and just everybody, all, just, just all around shenanigans and stuff. Um, but we're gonna introduce you to my newest project, which is gonna be our 2022 Rocky Mountain Race Week um, vehicle. We're not gonna take the Cobra. Uh, the Cobra is going to get dialed in more this year, eighth mile stuff. I'm going to do some grudge racing. Um, a bit me, myself, more familiar with the car and its particular trim. Um, get it dialed in better. You know, just, just try to just make it better off because I think there's more left in it with a little bit of work because the setup's relatively new. Um, while the engine and trans are getting done, that's going to be like a 2023 thing, but it's going to be in process this whole year. So uh, let's flip the camera around and go to our newest project for the year and uh i hope y'all will enjoy it i think it's pretty cool it's gonna be retro it's gonna be a budget deal we're gonna really keep up with like every single little change we do and what difference it makes so you know i mean we're not just gonna be throwing a bunch of crap and be like it goes from this fast to this fast with nothing in between so let's go well get out. there it is 1985 f100 got the retro stripes wheels it's a step side single cab it's an auto for now but we're gonna change that i promise when it blows up which will be sooner than later we're gonna put a manual either a t5 or a tko in it it's got a wood bed i love the patina on it it's so cool hey guys i just want to come up with something really cool i was cleaning out the glove box on the truck today and when i said that my grandfather bought this brand new for my dad in 85 he, i mean i wouldn't lie and like i didn't even know this had all the original like paperwork in it in the little folder I'm trying to be gentle with it because i don't want to hurt none of it it's like a little envelope the maintenance log and schedule the operating owner's guide there i mean i'm they're in pretty freaking good condition like this is so cool That everything's still here after all these years. I mean, that's just sweet. I mean, straight out of the 80s. A little warranty. That's what's covered. The coolest thing is the payment book. That's pretty cool. My grandfather. That's pretty cool. Like, all this stuff's pretty cool. So I figured it'd be nice to include all that. Also, it's pretty yeah, gum cool. It's a little coin holder in this glove box. That's pretty neat. That's a good idea. But got some cassette tapes. I need to look and see what they are. I ain't got nothing to play them, so I took the I took the other radio out, but. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out what's on these things. I think this one says like Stairway to Heaven. That's on that side. Yeah. It's like a mixtape or something. Yeah. Christmas one. That's pretty cool. But no, I just, I figured I wanted to put that in there while I was cleaning out the glove box and I didn't even know all this stuff was in here still. So, that's pretty slick. I figure everybody appreciate that. Definitely gonna hold on to all this stuff, probably bag it up, put it not in the truck so it doesn't get messed up. So, sweet. These things are really hard to find right now. I think, I think they call these things the Bullnose F100s. Um, this is the transition year, it's a weirdo truck between carburetor and EFI, because they went EFI in 86. So it has like this weird feedback, it had this weird feedback carburetor on there. It has like a throttle position sensor and a bunch of stuff with a TFI, kind of like you see on a Fox body. 
but we had trouble that several years ago when my grandfather had it. Um, and we ended up putting like a 600 CFM Summit carburetor on it. And, uh, you know, uh, from there it's kind of been what it's been. This thing was rated at 135 horsepower crank. Uh, 7.9 to one compression, flat tapping cam. I mean, this is the epitome of smog year machines. Um, luckily, uh, it's got a 302, so obviously we got something to work with. I'll open the hood up here. Find the latch. Use this. So yeah, it's a lot of room in here. Uh, obviously, you see the little carburetor we got on there, and uh, I just took some time lapse videos of me putting the uh, two inch spacer on there. Um, to do get that going but basically uh made a couple of draggy hits on it when i first got it from my grandfather the way it was with the carburetor just rebuilt slapped it on there five year old gas in the tank went out and made a hit as all eighth mile but it went 11 30 something at like 63 mile an hour So I'll come back same night, tune on the carburetor a little bit. I bumped the timing up two degrees. Uh, it was right on the valve, so I put some uh, C85 and a little bit of 93 in there to help that out. Um, we took the clutch fan off and uh, went out and made another hit. And it rewarded with a 1113 at 64 or like 0.3 or whatever. I'll have the draggy videos. I'll put the draggy videos in here and the uh, Oh, I only got one draggy video. I didn't video the other one for some reason. And the two different time slips. Um, so that's the goal of this thing. What we're going to do is every little change, since it's so slow, I'm just going to make play with it on the street. I'm going to go uh, every change. I'm going to make a change, go out and make a draggy hit and see what kind of difference it makes. So, you know, it's the best thing I got besides the dyno. You know, the most real world in its anyway is on the strip or how we all know how accurate the draggy stuff is so um yeah the goal is to run 12s of this thing at race week that's what i want to do drive at the race week and run 12s um like i said we're gonna start off with what i've done the carbon spacers tonight headers are next um we're gonna swap this car this uh distributor to a vacuum advanced style uh because this is for the feedback carb and actually reads off a of tps on the factory carb so we don't have that no more so I'm feeling that this isn't doing its job advancing the timing and stuff right. So we'll do that obviously in test, do the manifolds and test. Um, and then we'll pull it and put a cam in it, depending on, I'm not sure yet if, since this is a weird year, if I'm gonna be able to do the factory roller stuff in it or I might have to do a conversion to put roller cam in there, which this is flat tapping currently. It's 7.9 the one compression. I mean, it's a, it's a dog. Um, but when we do that, we're gonna get rid of all this serpentine or, or this belt drive stuff and go to a uh, serpentine just for simplicity. Um, probably start off with some E7 heads, maybe some GT40s if I can find them, mill them down, try to get that compression up, cam. And after we do all that, if the AOD is still intact, we'll put a nitrous plate on there and spray it um, until it dies. And we'll put the T5 on there and we'll just do little stuff like that. Um, probably lower the truck down. Put some wider tires on it, cow tracks, whatever we have to do to get it in the 12s. Um, and then go up the Rocky Mountain Raceway and just have a blast with it. You know, we'll do some tasteful mods, but I really want uh, appearance mods, but I want to keep the patina, you know, just the old school kind of retro. Like the wheels, I'm going to try to keep something retro like that. I just wish these were a little wider because I do really like them. I think they're cool as crap. Uh, maybe something a little bigger, a little wider. Um, 
So yeah, that's kind of the goal with it, but uh, I hope y'all like it. We'll start cleaning it up. We'll hear a little air. I think it's gonna be a pretty fun deal. You know, sometimes you deal with these fast cars so much that they're just on edge and stressful all the time. It's just fun to have something that's just slow. Oh yeah, I can't get classified as a mod, I guess, but you can, because it probably will make a difference. But I didn't even check the tire pressure in it before I went and made some hits the other night, and they're like low as crap. So I aired them up to what they should be. So that might be some rolling resistance. So it may pick up from that, I don't know. <laughs> so like I said, we're just kind of testing it as is. So let's flip over and uh, since I'm, I'm done uh, installing the spacer and start it up and then get out on the road with the uh, little draggy. Awesome little dude right here. But uh, let's see what we got going. Let's get that first start going, see how it does. Like it drove me back and forth to school when I was a kid, and uh, maybe five or ten miles every now and then. I mean, it don't have no miles on this, it's not like 30,000 miles on it. There you can see, yeah, you can kind of see it in there. Yeah, I ain't got hardly no miles on there. I thought it was pretty cool, but uh, I do have to work on the fast idle screw a little bit, try to figure out how to make it idle uh, right with the choke on, and when the choke comes off, it not idle a million miles an hour but i'll work on that i'll do some research i guess anybody knows more about carburetors they can give me some advice in the comments so let's go out there and make some hits guys back and the results are in on paper didn't go any faster it actually went slower but there's a couple reasons for that i believe number one and probably most importantly the air is not as good so when it went 11 13 in the eight before i put the spacer on it was negative a thousand and forty nine da and it was 55 degrees tonight it is um Actually, I'm wrong, I'm sorry about that. It was negative 379 DA and 56 degrees when it went 11.13 and tonight it is 1,000 above DA and 66 degrees. So um, it's real humid outside too because it rained earlier. So um, that's one reason um, that probably has a lot to do with it. And the truck actually seems to be spinning more now. So I'm having a harder time getting it to 60 foot. So it'll be 60 foot and slower. Obviously it's gonna to be slower. Um, so that can be contributed to uh, it's making more power or a little bit of air output in the tires. It had like 10 in the back. <laughs> I bumped it up to 20 because I feel like it'd be a little better. Um, or yeah, I mean, to me, seat of the pants wise, in the mid range and up, it feels like it pulls harder. It definitely feels like it pulls harder, like mid range. So um, I think the spacer made a difference. I think what I need to do now is to either wait for a cooler day, uh, similar conditions, and try it again, or figure out how to make it hook up a little better. If I get the hook up a little better, it'll probably do a lot better. Um, I don't know if I want to put tires on it quite yet, but we may have to, or do some, whatever the tricks are to get these tail light trucks to hook. I don't know, that's another learning curve I'm gonna have to do. Um, but yeah, um, I'll insert the draggy video and the uh, 
paperwork or whatever, whatever the little little time slip it gives you. And uh, in the video, it doesn't spin, but I'm like big toe in the throttle, like just barely, barely rolling into it to keep it from spinning. And that's kind of where I got my best results. And not, it was just like blazing the tires like all the way through first gear, which is hilarious because the car probably, or the truck probably makes 110 horsepower right now at the tires. Um, so yeah, next up's gonna be uh, headers. Uh, shorty headers and uh, probably I'll add an X pipe to it, make it sound a little better because it's like true duels right now and it's, it sounds all right, but I think X pipe will make it sound a little throatier, a little better. So I guess the next uh, next step will be that, or and uh, maybe trying to squeeze in, like I said, another day to uh, better weather and hook a little better, see how much the car spacer really helps. But I think the fact that it went almost identical mile an hour to 11.13, uh, it's a touch slower in a lot worse air. I think it's making more power. So we'll go from there, guys. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. Thanks again for tuning in to watch the new video on this newest project of ours. Um, we appreciate all the support. Um, any kind of feedback in the comments, things you would like to see on the truck, other things we can do different, content we can make with the truck any information you'd like to know about the truck and stuff we do um, we just appreciate all the help we can get um, we were contemplating on naming the truck red man like the chew in the back of because i feel like it fits the error but uh if y'all can just leave some comments below what y'all think or any ideas y'all think will be good for uh names of this truck uh it's kind of special to me so i want to keep it going and keep it growing so i appreciate everything and y'all have a good one we'll see y'all later